Welcome to the ESL Hearthstone Legendary Series. My name is TJ Osmakuti Sanders, and I'm joined with Frodan once again. How you doing, man? Uh, I'm doing good. Uh, good. Day number two is already about to begin, and mm -hmm. day number one was really fun. We had a lot of great games in the end. Trump defeated Savitz to take the series 3-2 to two and get a ticket to California, which means four out of our five players uh, are pretty well-known people. I'm really excited yeah. to see how the land continues to shape up. Yeah, and all those players had to play through qualifiers themselves, so... Mm -hmm. Um, they've had to play games to get to that point. We can take a look at the format real quick. Um, basically, the Redemption Tournament is all the runner-ups from the four weeks of the regular season to the Legendary Series put into four separate seven-player brackets and over the course of this weekend are going to fight it out. Yesterday, we saw Trump uh, coming ahead in his bracket. And, of course, today we are going to see one more player join him at that Legendary Series Land Finals. Yeah, uh, I think I'm really excited for the land finals. It promises to be extremely exciting. A lot of people saw the first season. It was cool. Uh, we had some fun moments. We had some pretty awkward moments like we usually do in Hearthstone events. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but the most important thing is that we were able to build up a story around guys like Silent Storm, who people said it was the best player you haven't heard of. Mm -hmm. Now that people already started to hear of, who is the next person to rise up? I think we have a good mix of players who are established. We have Colento coming from week one. Life coach from week two. Kabi from week three. He's the newcomer from South America, but he did defeat Savitz in the finals. That's twice that Yanni got denied there at the <laughs> final stop. Yeah. And then the fourth time, uh, fourth week was Raynad from Tempo Storm. Uh, and then we have eight more slots coming in next week through the open qualifier for any North American participants. We want to give out world championship points, and in order to do so, we have to have eight slots that are open and eight that technically get invited through yeah. our qualification process. Uh, but effectively, it's going to be a very, very competitive format. So next week, if you're in North America, make sure to sign up over at LegendarySeries.com. Indeed. And, of course, we have to remind you once again, even though we see it every single week, the format, of course, mm -hmm. for the matches is Conquest. Conquest is, of course, best of five. Each player brings three unique decks. In order to win the match, they must win one game with each of those three decks. Of course, oh. it's blind pick, and the winning player must choose a new deck. Loser can opt to switch with the deck they just lost with or change it up. That's right. Uh, it's really important that we continue to hash this out because we recognize that a lot of users are still new to the Hearthstone experience. They may have seen it for the first time on mobile if you uh, are an iPhone or an Android smartphone user. And you just download Hearthstone. Congratulations, you're about to waste a lot of your free time or your actual working time. Yeah, and uh, It's a money. really fun game. I hope you guys enjoy it. We play a format called Conquest. Uh, where you have to win with once at each at the deck. Uh, this is because it's uh, it's a foil from last year, where in 2014 the format was you would play until a deck loses. We call it the King of the Hill or Last Hero Standing. And uh, people were just, you know, they want to see more diversity because that's part of the fun of Hearthstone, seeing people be able to play with a lot of different classes and styles uh, instead of just one uh, archetype just dominating like uh, an aggressive deck or, you know, a very slow controlling deck. Yeah, there was <coughs> players last year who... Uh, we're very adamant about um, saying their right. how displeased they, they, they were. They really with, hated losing to Hunter, for example. Hunter or, or, or Zoo, Zoo Warlock. Yeah. Aggressive decks that the, the best of five series would last a total of, what, 15 minutes? Sometimes. Um, in yeah. the extreme scenario where you're just 3 0 because uh, you drew, you know, the aggressive decks drew pretty well, and then unfortunately yeah. the opponent did not prepare. Of course, you can always argue that uh, the opponent should have brought decks that were okay against it. It's his fault for not having a good deck against it, because there's no perfect deck in Hearthstone. Is there anything close to perfect, you think? Control Warrior. You think it's close to perfect? Uh, it, perfect and it says is, that it, it's it so has, subjective, I suppose. It's like no bad matchup. It's incredibly robust no matter what. I think the closest that ever came was mid-range Hunter's dominance when it had two mana Unleash the Hounds with two mana Buzzard. Yeah. Uh, or, and people were starting to really understand the synergy with Undertaker. Like That yeah. was probably the most destructive, crazy deck where just like, even its worst matchup was like 50-50. Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah. Control where I'd say might be the most refined, just because it's been around for so long without many changes. Um, but... No. I, 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 I don't know about that. But it is definitely really refined. Yeah. But, I mean, look, you can look at like Zoo. Zoo is probably the most optimized list in all of Hearthstone. Don't you think? Well, there's so... There's like a big... The thing is like... Smudgy line... Control decks can never truly be refined um, in a timeless sequence because the metagame is always changing. And yeah. a control deck always has to react to what another deck uh, builds out. Mm -hmm. So if they don't have the right response, say they're playing big game hunters and there's no giants or any, like, you know, no one's, say all of a sudden people decide to stop running Dr. Boom mysteriously. 
then big game hunter is not really useful. And so that one card is not really refined. It's it's pretty hard to subjectively say which deck is yeah. like the most optimized. Mm -hmm. But uh, I would definitely lean over towards that. Uh, you know, the warlock decks are pretty good. Um, I think face hunter part of the reason why it's so strong is because it's optimized uh, in terms of damage. When they found out work and infiltrator was a good card too for it. Pretty cool stuff. Yeah, small changes over yep. time. Uh, but one of the reasons why we're able to uh, have Legendary Series, be able to fly these guys out to California, be able to have a 16-player land, is, of course, our sponsors, Plantronics and Gigabyte G1, are helping us out with the Legendary Series this season and uh, making a bunch of cool things possible. Last season, we had an 8-player land. This season, it's going to be 16 over the course of three days. It's going to be really crazy, and it wouldn't be possible without those guys. So if you want some Plantronics headsets, maybe some Gigabyte G1 motherboards, head to those links that you just saw below and uh, help support us and support what we do with Hearthstone. That's right. And make sure you guys stay in the conversation as well on social media. Hashtag HLS. And tweet at ESL Hearthstone. Let us know your favorite matches, uh, who you want to win, maybe who you don't want to win. Some people are into that as well. And uh, you can even comment about how the production is. Any suggestions, feedback, comments, concerns. <laughs> uh, Not just with Hearthstone. Yeah. Any, <laughs> any, any positories that you have as well. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, also, we're giving, away, awesome we're giving away Plantronics headsets as well as packs. You can head over to esl.gg slash redemption series. Uh, follow the instructions on the screen. You know, you'll be entered into that raffle to win, uh, like I said, the Plantronics headset or even some free classic packs. Uh, that's good stuff, man. I, I'm actually realizing that I'm missing some important cards uh, from my collection. I still don't have, like... Um, you know, I, I don't actually don't have Illidan myself. I know Brian Kibler was saying he doesn't have Illidan. I looked at my collection. I was like, I don't have Illidan either. That's kind of weird. I opened a golden Illidan once upon a time and had to disenchant it. That's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. That's pretty cool. I, I actually have one of those scenarios where I have a golden legendary, and I can get any legendary I want, but it's golden, and it's Mally Ghost. So it's like yeah. a golden Mally Ghost. And so I have a normal one, and I have a golden one. And I'm like, well... You're saving it up. Should I disenchant this golden one? So that way I can get any collection and get a full collection? Or should I actually start going on the pay-to-win train and just start getting gold and everything and disenchant my regular mallet goes? It's quite the conundrum. It is. Definitely is. Yeah. I, f I feel for you. Well, let's take a look at the groups for today. Um, uh, group B is what we're going to see today. Chalky Stripe Crow Cross, Modern Leper, Bunny Muffins, Lead Paint, and GCT Turret. And we're going to show you Group C, but that's not going to take place tomorrow. But you'll see players like Roger, Zuzu, the Regis, Corneco, Luffy, Soundstorm, and Domnus. But we can go ahead and take a closer look at Group B, which is the group that will play out today. GCT Turf uh, gets a, a, a automatically seed into the semifinal since he is the only player in this group that finished second place during his regular season week. Everybody else finished below that, and so um, GCT Turf gets rewarded for his higher placing finish. Everybody else has to go through. And uh, it is single elimination, best of five conquest, all the way through. Uh, the winner moves on to the Legendary Series land final. Everybody else gets nothing. There's no prize pool associated, so it's winner take all. Well, they already won some money through the Open Cups. Uh, so they have a nice little amount of pocket change. The winner did get uh, a pretty good amount, over $1,000. Mm -hmm. And uh, now they also get a ticket to the land. So that's really cool for them to secure of course, they want to get a little bit more, too. There's World Championship points on the line. And being able to get the World Championship points, might, some people might be wondering, you know, what's it all for? Uh, it seeds into the World Championships happening at BlizzCon later this year. And in order to get some of those points, uh, you have to win some of these tournaments or place high on ladder. And ladder is extremely competitive, so tournaments are another format. Yeah, where people can not necessarily go through that grind if they don't want to feel like it's contributing towards anything. Plus, they win some money on the side. Mm-hmm. On the other side, it's always a good thing. But we are moments away from jumping into the first match. Uh, it is going to be between Chalky and Bunny Muffins. Now, Chalky participated in week three, where he uh, tied for third place. He had an overall game score of seven wins, ten losses. So uh, he did pretty well making it to third, but his, his game score tells a different story. Uh, Bunny Muffins, on the other hand, uh, he has struggled quite a bit. He, in week number four, which was the last week they were broadcasted, he uh, tied for seventh, or uh, that's the first player to be eliminated. Uh, he had an overall game score of one win and six losses. And uh, over uh, overall, his overall record in games that were broadcasted, so on Twitch TV or otherwise, uh, games that were broadcasted, Bunny Muffins has a total uh, game record of two wins and 18 losses. Ooh. Yeah, that is very, very rough. Um, and so 
he he's obviously made it far in qualifiers. He qualified for season one of the Legendary Series, uh, so we got to broadcast and cast him last season. He's qualified for many other things as well as uh, this season of the Legendary Series. But once it comes down to the You're matches that matter, uh, he struggled quite a bit. So we'll have to see if he can uh, turn that around. And it's going to be Warrior versus Rogue first off. Now, Chucky messaged me uh, last night, and he said, uh, TJ, you better ASO? have... Oh, yeah. <laughs> you better have your <laughs> SM Orc emote ready tomorrow. Which led me to believe that Chucky's going to be going back to his roots and playing three very hyper-aggressive devs. He's got the lineup to do it. Rogue, Hunter, and Warlock are his three classes. And wow. this Rogue deck, as we saw, has what? Shadow Step, Arcane, Arcane Golem, Arcane Golem. Loot Hoarder, Goblin Auto Barber, Double Arcane Golem. So I imagine this is just a super aggressive Rogue deck with Shadow Steps, Cold Bloods, um, Tinker Sharp to Royal, where you just go super aggressive super quickly. And uh, I've se actually seen this deck make uh, quite a resurgence lately, if you can call it a resurgence. It sort of reminds me, um, so at least the idea of it, options. to Backspace Rogue, which was popular a couple months ago. But uh, it's a really well, exciting It's been a deck. while since uh, the aggro rogue has yeah. actually been viable. It's back when the reason why it even first came to existence was, I, I guess you you can say that Miracle Rogue was so dominant and popular that one it was oh, unexpected, but two, the fact is it was a very good at killing Miracle Rogue, the best deck um, at the time, because Rogue had to use its own hero power to trade a lot. So cards like, you know the. Uh, anything that like got cold blood, like Argent Squire or something mm -hmm. like that, got a double dip damage. Yeah. It's just like insanely powerful. Yeah. Slightly awkward mm. first set of turns for Chalky though. Uh, this deck, yeah, sort of relies on having um, well, really quick start. Yeah, very explosive start, and he's just got a handful of three drops, which I can imagine he doesn't really have many cards that are more expensive than four. Um, he might right. even like top out at like Tinker's Sharp Sword, or which might be one of the the highest drops in his deck. So, huh. well, talk about impromptu. Build your own deadly poison. <laughs> yeah. Goblin, Goblin Auto Barber, definitely one of those cards where people were thinking upon GVG release to be like one of the really good solid value cards. Yeah. It just hasn't really found its way into many decks because um, it's relative low power level uh, just compared to having other things in the deck that are more valuable. It's also awkward. I mean, on yeah. turn two, you want a dagger. Then on turn three, you don't really want to play an auto... Uh, well, you can. Auto you can if you want to put like a, f a true silver champion on board or something. Like, you you attach that in a deadly poison. But then, you know, then you don't have the deadly poison for the SI on turn four. And yeah. It messes up all these normal paradigms that you're used to uh, in the rogue deck. And so it's curious to see that Chalky's attached it in this, but I don't mind. I personally love playing it in Mech Rogue because it's really useful on things like the Cogmaster's Wrench, mm -hmm. so which turn it into a 4 3 weapon. I know that all too well. TJ knows that all too well. We played a best of five to start off the day, and uh, TJ beat me really badly in the first game. And then lost. <laughs> well, <laughs> barely. Well, actually, it was funny. We should actually tell how this series went throughout the rest of the day. So but for now, uh, focusing on Chalky's play here, the Loot Hoarder definitely seems to be the best way because he needs to get rid of his Armor Smith. Uh, super problematic because you don't want the, the Warrior to be gaining too much life here. Oh. Yeah. This, this deck can actually piece together large burst combos in the late game relatively easily. Um, Ooh. Arcane Golem, Shadow Step, Cold Blood. It's sort of reminiscent to the old Miracle Rogue style. Um, it just can do the burst combos a lot sooner. And the burst combos have more flexibility because Arcane Golem, of course, you can play a couple turns earlier than Leroy. Um, you can fit more than one set of the combo in, at least nowadays, with like double Shadow Step. So... Well, there's a couple of choices here for Chucky, or sorry, for Bunny Muffins. He can go for Dread Corsair and start putting out patrons. He could have gotten also really defensive on the Sludge Belcher end, Sludge Belcher end, and honestly, both are okay considering that you saw Goblin Otter Barbers, you see Loot Hoarders, so you have to understand that this deck already has to be pretty aggressive. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm all right. Yeah. 
Now, I guess the good side is Wolf Rider. I mean, it doesn't necessarily get taken advantage of by the Grim Patron effect. It just trades in, right? Yeah. This I mean. is definitely one of the rougher decks, though, to go against because Patron Warrior has gotten pretty decent at handling aggro. I used to think that Patron Warrior was pretty bad against aggro, but yeah. with this the inclusions of Armor Smiths and Sludge Belchers, they have been able to handle their fair share without losing too much potency as a burst combination deck. Yeah. I feel like this is one of the aggro decks that it should struggle with the most. But I think so. Yeah, just um, because it's got not more reach, but more, um, I want to say flexibility, but I'm not sure if that's the right word. Uh, be just because the, the hero power alone is mm -hmm. so much different than Hunter or Warlock because you can actually interact with the board with it. It's not just one-dimensional in the fact that, oh, you either do two damage to their face or you draw a card, which drawing a card is good, but uh, usually uh, the hero power just allows your, your cards to go further instead uh -huh. of needing to, to draw cards. Well, it's really interesting to see that uh, the Colette Oracle is going to end up drawing more cards for a combo deck, but, I mean, this is kind of what needs to happen in order for Jockey to put on reasonable pressure. Yeah. You want to kill them before the cards that you give them from Cold Light Oracle make that much of a difference. Right. It usually is your reach, um, yeah. assuming that you're you know, top decking and trying to find the right answer, and then all of a sudden use Cold Light to dig a little bit deeper. Immediate draw impact as opposed to like a novice engineer, which draws only one. Yeah. I wonder. And since you're controlling the draw in your turn, you, like you said, the immediate use, you can make immediate use of the cards where your opponent has to wait till the next turn. So drawing cards on your turn is more effective than drawing cards on uh, your opponent's turn. Well, Bunny Muffins did end up drawing a weapon, and weapon with the Dread Corsair makes it free. So that's f uh, five mana remaining, and he can set up the Sludge Belcher afterwards. I mean, there's a lot of ways to utilize the fact that a lot of cards have been reduced in cost uh, pretty effectively here and gain back a lot of tempo on the board. And he's seen the Wolf Rider, so he knows exactly the purpose Oh, okay. Of this deck. So, Battle Rage. That's also doable because you have the Cruel cool Taskmaster, which can take out the SI7 agent. And then the Great Corsair gets charged as well. You can toss into Battle Rage. That's That seems like a very greedy play, considering that you already have a lot of cards. I still like yeah, this original play that we were talking about. The Sludge Belcher opens up... Um, a window of you to set up other things like the pilot shredders so that way it just doesn't get sniped easily yeah and cold blood is pretty rough i was talking to hyped about cold blood in the current meta and it's just it's just too inconsistent sometimes it's just not the four damage it overkills a lot of things too because of sludge belchers mm -hmm. and he said you know i was like well what did you play instead of cold bloods and he was suggesting other cards that could really fit into it shadow step wasn't one of them in fact he's shadow stepping his cold light oracle yeah, just to find better answers. And in fact, I think that's why. Wow. Um, in the last turn, uh, Bunny Muffins decided to kill the two power Cold Light Oracle as opposed to the three power SI Agent. Which seems a little weird since he's putting down Jet Corsair and SI Agent can trade in where Cold Light Oracle can't. But he was trying to play around the uh, ability for Chalky to shadow step the Cold Light Oracle because he didn't mm -hmm. want him to draw into more reach, um, mm -hmm. which is a pretty good read. I mean, I guess it's not that tough because you see Wolf Rider. Sure. Which Wolf Rider, when you see a Wolf Rider, Wolf Rider you know is exactly. pretty obvious. Yeah. Here we go, one more time. <laughs> cool Light Oracle. And that's going to mill a couple cards here from Bunny Muffins. Azure Trade. So that is a top side. Warsaw oh! Commander, number two, gets burned. That's Not sure how relevant that will end up being, considering that one Warsaw Commander might end up doing the case here. It's still no second Grim Patron, uh, but there is a Frothing Berserker. How much damage can he do? Three, six. Uh, Father Berserker is eight. Plus a cool Taskmaster. That's 11. I wonder. No, that's not enough. No. Just, you know, always worth yeah, calculating. Yeah, yeah. Especially with Patron Warrior. Right. Um, a high well, level I mean, Patron Warriors will tell you that the one thing. The one mistake a lot of players make is not calculating lethal. Right. Like every turn that you think you might even be remotely, remotely close. Oh man, that's a big draw too. It's like uh, the blade flurry here with the deadly poison. Um, one thing to consider too is you know the damage from the hand because how much can you just generate with like an unstable ghoul, frothing berserker, and a warsong commander? 
with some whirlwinds. Mm. I think someone was telling me how Death's Bite with uh, Dread Corsair plus an, uh, a War Song, Frothing, and an Unstable is 20 damage. Yeah. And like that's comparable to Leroy back in the day or. As long as you have something to um, hit the Unstable goal into. Yeah, the Power Overwhelming combinations with Faces Manipulator. Yeah. I mean, this is a really big deal. Now he can start getting past these taunts, and these are the bi only taunts slash defensive cards remaining outside of Unstable Ghoul. And Shockey's going to utilize this as best as he can. He's going to wait to see what also comes out of this Pilot Shredder. <laughs> that is really bad. Yep. Oh, man. Unstable Ghoul number two. That's actually... That's terrible. Yeah. Hold uh. on. So, if he kills us off, there's, and he uses SI7 agent here. He's got a proc for the There's unstable three minions. Yeah. And then, uh, this Frothing Berserker gains... Two plus two, that's four. Six plus the Quiltassim, that's three. Plus the two, that's eleven. Uh, plus another... Oh wait, plus another three from the Unstable Cool. I think that's lethal. That has to be lethal. Yeah. Is he, oh, yeah, can you fit in the Fire War X attack as well? That's two, four, seven. No, maybe. Maybe. It's really tight. I, but I do think he has lethal. I think he has 19 damage, if we calculate correctly. It would be 10 with the first unstable ghoul. Um, what, no. Oh, I forgot the Wars on Commander counts as minions, so he definitely has lethal now. Yeah. Yeah. So he attacks into this twice. That's. Uh, it'll be, be an 8 attack. Yeah. He attacks into it again, it'll be plus 5, so it'll be at 13. He cruel Taskmasters. Right. It'll be at 16. So no, that shouldn't be... Right, um, oh no, he'll get the 2 damage from the cruel Taskmasters. Right, exactly. So, yeah. Yeah. so the 19, two of right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Or 18 or 19. Like, no, it's a cruel Taskmaster damage as well. Yeah. Like, to the face. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. the cruel Taskmaster exactly. also take damage. JC can set really well, yeah. Okay. I counted correctly, TJ. Oh, wait, no. He did 20 damage. He did 20 damage. <laughs> 20 Dang damage. it. <laughs> ah, okay, well, it was really close. The yeah, point yeah. is, he definitely had that lethal. It yeah. was almost like a little bit inconsequential, even yeah. if he sequenced it improperly. But I think Bunny Muffins definitely did the right order there. Yeah, that was um, the maximum, maximum amount of damage, yeah. I mean, he could have, like, for example, Cruel Test, like, second, like, last, mm. but still would have been able to, to get in the damage there. Yeah. I uh, would have missed, like, one or two damage, but whatever. I was counting the... Uh, I took a minimalistic approach, so mm -hmm. I was counting just the amount of damage that you would need to like just lethal him without overkill, mm -hmm. just because that's, yeah. So I was right by my you're logic. Always, you're always right, TJ. <laughs> yeah. You're always right. Well, Money Muffins is going to take game number one, and Road Deck not working out so well for Chucky that game, but he did have a pretty rough start, um, and I'd imagine that that deck would... Uh, a lot of it depends. It depends what type of tech the, um, the Sludge Bulchers were tough to get through. Yeah, that's right. The Sludge Belches definitely were, I think, a hidden MVP. Uh, a lot of people could look at and be like, wow, of course the Frothing Berserker is like the huge thing, but remember those slud the slimes holding back the gates? How much damage did Chalky have? He had two Cold Bloods, two Arcane Golems, and a Shadow Step uh, at one point. And he ended up using the Shadow Step for draw because he didn't need it for extra damage. It's 20 damage. So that's 20 damage. And yep. his opponent was at like, you know, 18 yeah. health. So yep. he had him covered, and it's Definitely doable with an eight mana, nine mana. Mm -hmm. So it, it's it's one of those things where Chalky could have been one turn away from lethal, uh, and he also did have cards like Sap ready to go too. So it's a little unfortunate that he wasn't able to squeeze it out. But he ends up switching it out, and he's going to be trying to see if he can capitalize onto this Druid deck. Now I have a question: Was Chalky targeting a specific deck at all when he was talking to you? To be honest, I think he. No, because that's the only thing he told me. <laughs> I responded to what he said about the better have your SM work emote ready, mm -hmm. and he never said another word. It was very cryptic and chalky esque Well, I don't think it's very cryptic at all. I think um, it's pretty easy to crack that code. I think he's playing aggro decks. But then when I, well, I met when I tried to, like, ask him questions. He could have uh, been trying to mind games me. Right, and he's playing, like, Fatigue Hunter. Yeah, like, four, or... Like, yeah, every four, deadly shot, deaths. explosive shot, <laughs> multi-shot. Yeah, I, I I didn't really know for sure until I saw his deck lineup. Once I saw Rogue Hunter Warlock, I, I knew that 
for sure. Like he was just oh, going man. full aggression. Soul fire for one mana. Here we go. Yeah, and I, I was actually I, I can't remember who I told, but one of the or the production team earlier, I said Chucky's gonna run three super aggressive decks, and I wouldn't even say this would be mid range zoo. I'm gonna guess that this is just straight up old good old fashioned. I just want to see like zoo Scarlet with Crusader <laughs> and Scar like Blood Knight, like the old days. <laughs> Do you remember that? <laughs> yeah, the blood Argent Squire the as well. Yeah, you could you could Argent Squire turn one and then coin out Blood Knight turn two. This it was really and that could win you games right there. There was a lot of ways, a lot of openings back then that could just win you games. Sure. All right, now there's <laughs> a lot of ways to optimize. That eh, makes sense. I remember uh, Strife Crow ran Arcane Golem and Zoo for a while with um, Power Overwhelmings. It's a long time ago. Yeah. That was around BlizzCon time. Yeah. Lots so, changed. do you innervate Wrath because you're just, like, afraid of this? Or I guess you don't... Do you even need to necessarily Wild Growth now? You're pretty much guaranteed to play anything you draw. You have first seven mana with yeah. two innervates. Yep. I think you just Wrath here because it's too much of a threat. Yeah. It's a pretty bad hand, though. It is rough. Um, especially because he could easily just have another dead draw, like another combo piece, mm -hmm. or a re another wild growth. Yeah. And then you're just like, well, this actually doesn't do anything, and my opponent just builds minions. Yeah. There's a lot of dead draws that are in his hand that could make him fall too far behind. Mm. And this is a deck that if you fall behind, you pretty much just lose. Now, if you're Chalky, can you can definitely put your opponent on like Wrath, right? Like, why would you struggle that yeah. long? Because it's either Hero Power, Wild Growth, and Wild Growth is probably like strictly better in that situation. Not that it changes his play, right? But I'm just yeah. like wondering if about there was information giving there. Yeah, if there was something that he could do to play around Wrath, that is a dead giveaway. Wrath for one to draw. Well, Ancient of Lore is actually pretty good because he can innervate that out next turn to try and diversify his hand. But uh, he's, taking, has soul fire. he's taking a lot of damage so far. So, TJ, why don't, we, why don't you... Uh, why, why, why do you think soul fire has just completely rotated out and people use Dark Bomb instead? It's just one damage difference, one mana difference, and you don't have the drawback of discarding a card. There's, there's not... Since there's more cards, a right. bigger card pool, every card has more value inherently. At least that's one of the ways that I looked at it. Like, there's not any cards that are just like, ah, well, I could just get rid of that card pretty easily. Because mm. there is cards that I think are really important, especially in the the current zoo right now, um, where it's like mid range, where you have a lot of like big big creatures that you you sort of rely on, like Doom Guards. Sure, sure. Where back in the day, you could discard a Doom Guard and still be okay because people didn't have as many ways to deal with heavy aggro. Ooh. -hoo. Well, that, is, that definitely makes things interesting. It's a lot Two of damage. Abuser Sergeant and uh, Arcane Goal. Next turn, that is how much damage? Oh, you can't fire for zero. Eight, 12 damage from the hand. You know, I, I, I understand a lot what you're saying, DJ. I think for me personally, I always thought of Soulfire as not as a zero mana card and stuff. Well, I guess in Zoo it was. But in Handlock, I always saw Soulfire as a two mana card because you would always have to tap for it some to replace it. And as a Handlock, you always try to make sure you keep up in cards. Mm -hmm. So it'd always be like two mana, deal four damage. Otherwise, you lose a card. Uh, you can always make the assumption that you wouldn't necessarily need that card anyways, that you're going to risk discarding. But now Soulfire would be three mana for four damage. And that just seems... A little bit too slow for what you want to accomplish, especially in some of these demon decks oh, now. So, Shadow Bolt. Yeah, kind of like Shadow Bolt. But, you know, especially in some of the demon decks where you really need to keep up some of those cards for synergy. Yeah. It just felt like Dark Bomb was just better. Yeah. And then uh, the game has kind of moved on without Soulfire. But I think because it has, there will be an opportunity where Chalky drops the Soulfire and just completely surprises uh, Buddy Muffins. Yeah. I mean, this is a lot of damage, huh? This is, um... I mean, 16 damage over two turns. Yeah. I mean... That's just from hand. Gang boss. Uh... But... Does he want to play the Flame Imps and Abusive Sergeant and get the damage out now? I think it's very telling if you just play Abusive Sergeant and hit the face, though. Part of the problem, too, is what if his opponent plays a Taunt minion of some kind? Yeah. 
He... I mean, that's a pretty big ward staring at him from Bunny Muffins here. Right. Uh, I'm not surprised that he trades into the, the zombie chow just because there's... Swipe's been used. Yeah. Swipe's been used, and also he's afraid that if he doesn't, he might just die in two turns. Right. The Abusive Sergeants also represent damage, so Chalky calculating to see if he can take out as much as possible. Bunny, in the meantime, looks like he's... Uh, this is also a very, like, awkward situation. It's like, well, do I spend my big minions cleaning up these 1-1s? One -ones? <laughs> or do I start hitting the face because I realize I can do 8 damage to him? It's yeah. a lot to give up. Wow, he's really respecting the damage. Is it the right choice? I think so. It's only eight damage from hand now. It's starting to dwindle. Right. Dark, dark bomb. bomb. So you got soul fire and dark bomb. <laughs> it really just is. It's kind of awkward too. You know, they're right now being separated by Nerubian and Inking boss. They refuse to sit next to each other. They're, they're, they're right now <laughs> arbitrating the peace talks, TJ. I see what you did there. The thing about Dark Bomb is it's always smiling, too. That pisses Soulfire off. Mm -hmm. It's like he's so happy that he's in the meta and Soulfire's not. Yeah. Personification is funny. It's also rather disturbing at times. <laughs> Chucky's still pacing himself here, realizing that uh, he doesn't want to do, go too ham. Don't Dark Bomb the face here. Plus, there's always the possibility your opponent might start having the combo and yeah. some things that might do too much damage. Sh uh, Shade snowballs out of control. Savage or ends the game. Yeah. So, I mean, he's still put Bunny Muffins at 13 health. Um, but, I mean, he's starting to run out of resources here. Especially with yeah. the taunt. It's going to take a lot to get through this. Well, Ancient Lore hitting the face is pretty good. And remember, there's a second Ancient of Lore, too. So that heal can be really clutch here for Bunny. Defender of Argus. Not bad. No. He has a way to activate the Nerubian egg. I think. Hmm. It is really hard to pass up uh, multiple targets for Defender of Argus and a fit to curve. It's just do you taunt up the Ink Gang boss? Not really. Just it doesn't really benefit too much off of the extra health. Your opponent can kill it anyways. Uh, but it's still really nice because it have such a high target of hell. Yeah. My seal for yeah. Okay. Huh. So he ends up going for the egg trade there, so he can activate the four four. Bunny's got Harrison, which isn't going to do much. Emperor Thorson makes things cheaper for next turn, so he can pilot Shredder with the Ancient of Lore. Ancient Lord draws more cards, but you'd rather use it for heal in the scenario where your opponent draws Doom Guard. You're suspecting your opponent might be holding Doom Guard sometime soon because he's been holding cards for a while yeah, and tapping a lot. Like, why would you tap a lot? Yeah. Although, wait, no, no, no. It has to be, like, power overwhelming that he'd tap a lot. Because Doom Guard, you'd want to play it as soon as you can, not, not Yeah, tap. there was a point in the game where he only had two cards. Right, um, and he tapped. And he tapped, so. You could put him on having... Power overwhelming. Power overwhelming seems to be the most likely scenario, or something like if it's Zoo and there's Void Callers and there's Malganus, he's like holding a super yeah. powerful Malganus card. Same time, one of these cards he's actually been holding since nearly the beginning of the game, and if it was power overwhelming, there was plenty of opportunities early on for him to use that. Yeah, so that's true. It's 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 a really hard thing to predict. Let's see, eight damage from hand, four damage, twelve. Wow. He's actually on a draw to win the game. Actually, no, because he wouldn't be able to use. Wait, wait. That's ah, second soul fire is awkward. That's. Oh. He can tap? He needed to tap that soul fire. Oh, man. Wait, he could tap and just, like, play Arcane Golem. Soul fire, discard the Leper Gnome. So, okay, so that's four damage. I mean, he's going to go for it. Yeah. Why not? Soul fire first. This is. I see the Leopard Gnome discard as oh, the second so far. And we are 2014, boys. <laughs> Bunny Muffin's nodding. He's like, okay, okay, you got me. Yeah.
And Chalky did. Double soul fire. That was not what Bunny Muffins expected. No. Chalky breathing inside sigh of relief because if he lost that game, it is so difficult to try and capitalize uh, and surprise your opponent again with, like, soul fires, you know? Yeah. And there was um, a lot of things that he'd be punished for. I mean, if, if that discarded the soul fire instead, he would have right. put him at three health, but he had Ancient of Lore next turn. He had a mm -hmm. board that could uh, contest. Um, he was like a savage roar draw away from being able to have lethal of his own. So there was a lot of things that he could have been punished for. It wasn't a win-win scenario. That that soul fire not getting discarded was probably what secured in the game. So he would have lost. Is what it, I'm saying. Yeah, it's true. I mean, Leopard Gnome was more damage too. It was too damage that to the face. He would have brought. But he had nine an ancient health. of lore. He had yeah, an ancient yeah. lore to heal, and then he can stall for time. Still, though, that was very very tight uh, finish there for Chalky. Now he still has Hunter and Rogue up against the Hunter and Druid for Bunny Ruffins. Yeah. How does the Aggro Rogue do against Druid? I'd imagine it do pretty well. Just because if you get a slow start like that, I think the Rogue can punish it even more. Because then you, like it. then you finally play a bigger drop and he just saps it and then just keeps on going. Um, I don't think... Uh, I mean, card draw... The What we saw in the first game where if you play a Colette Oracle, I don't think it's quite as effective against... Um, like, I don't think you can use it to your own benefit as much as a Patron Warrior can. Fair Because he wouldn't have been able to piece together that lethal. Where a Druid, I mean, sometimes more cards is not what you need. You need the right cards, but if the cards that you draw aren't the right ones, then it just doesn't really do you much. So I think the Rogue actually would fare a lot better. But he's going to go with Hunter. Can imagine, judging by the theme of decks that Chucky has been going with, that this is going to be a Face Hunter. Yeah, the Face Hunter seems to be more aligned to the theme. It's Sometimes it's a little bit bad to bring decks that don't necessarily fit a certain theme. So, like, if you bring two aggro decks and then one mid-range deck, unless the mid-range deck is, like, super powerful and robust that yeah. can tackle most matchups, it's a little bit inconsistent with your game plan. So all of a sudden, it's like you win twice with aggro decks and then your mid-range gets capitalized upon. Yeah. In Conquest, you're more rewarded for having a like a singular point of view, whereas you're trying to focus on targeting one deck or one type of deck, right. than having like a blanket. Because if you if you put them in a position, you're putting in a position where there's one deck that they can't find a win with. That's all you need, because they have to win with all three of their decks. So that's why the having a theme and having a singular approach, I think, is a lot different than trying to to blanket counter a bunch of different things. Yeah, sound like my English teacher. Talk about the symbolism of all our decks, TJ, and how it relates to the time periods and blankets. of our motifs and symbolism and the iconoclastic sets mm -hmm. of time. Deep. 500 essay due on Monday. Snipe! Okay, so there is a deck out there. By the way, uh, that Max Snow was from Buster, not from the deck. Um... There is a deck out there that I think Stan Sifka was pioneering. And Stan Sifka, the DreamHack Bucharest winner, yep. and he also qualified for Viking House Cup number three. He's going to be there. The guy is also literally talented at everything in life. He's like a god at ping pong. He's fit. He's good looking. He's good at card games. He really literally has it all. And uh, he's also a phenomenal deck builder. He was playing with Snipe for and it's like the top ten legend uh, and also using it to win some tournaments. I'm really impressed by how... Uh, people who can utilize snipe timing correctly because it is a hard card to play right. If you just play it improperly, it just stinks. And it's like a dead weight in your yeah. in your deck. It's like, oh, they play Sludge Belcher and you still have to get through so much. And like Hunter to get through Sludge Belcher that gets sniped is really inefficient. You play Animal Companions, still trades well, that kind of stuff. Um, this Hunter deck, though, seems like it is really weak against a mirror matchup when you're facing off against a face hunter. Especially Snipe. Snipe is incredibly ineffective against Face Hunter because, well, I mean, it, it can get a charger. Mm -hmm. um, but, like, cards like Animal Companion, it, it's a spell, so it, it doesn't even, it, it's not even affected by Snipe. Right, exactly. There's so many ways for it to not be really powerful. Ooh. Now it's just like crossing the fingers <laughs> <laughs> on the abuse of Sergeant. No, oh, right in the chest. But this is a lot of damage. So the thing about Snipe is that it's really great against Warsong Commander. Yep. They play Warsong Commander, Snipe. Mm -hmm. Or even on turn five, when you expect him to have Death Spite, and the Grim you Patron. play the Grim Patron. Snipe. Count him out. Sniped. Yeah. 
Yeah. And back in the old days, I, I tell the story sometimes, Snipe was fantastic as a as a tech card in the Miracle Rogue days. That's right. Against the Agitan Auctioneer. Or yeah. if you know Leroy's like their only minion remaining, yeah. they just Leroy and Snipe. Which a lot of times, I mean, it is their only yeah. creature remaining. You now, can really narrow it down. Did you know this, TJ? Because I played this one time in Arena. If you have an Ash Drake out, and they play, and, you, and somehow you got Snipe off Mad Scientist, and they play Stranglethorn Tiger, sniped. It dies. Five damage. Oh, really? It's yeah. by spell power. It gets buffed by spell power. Wow. That's an interaction. Did I just blow your mind? <laughs> no, but yes. <laughs> I'll say yes. I did. I would imagine that. They, I did, and it was beautiful. Because this game explosive, is if Explosive Trap is effective. <laughs> We actually didn't talk about this game at all, TJ. Yeah, well, uh, we just talked about the wild scenarios that Snipe can introduce. <laughs> uh, but what happened was the deck was too slow to keep up with the Face Hunter. Yeah. That's just usually what happens. The Snake Trap is really strong um, if you force your opponent to play a board game. But when your opponent is just rushing past your defense line, you saw the weaknesses of Snake Trap and Snipe. I think Stan Sifka played Freezing Trap and Snipes uh, in his deck. What was really interesting about Stan Sifka's deck, too, was that he had no kill commands. Yeah. And that was because he played only for the board. He had Ragnaros. He had Dr. Boom. Um, he even had um, you know, the normal shebang, but just no kill commands to, to finish the game because he had cards like Rag instead. I'm not sure if that's the version Bunny Muffins is running, but if he's running similar to that, it ended up costing him because he needed uh, to stop that damage. And Chalky did get you know Huffer, and Huffer to the face is really hard to come back from because you need to trade with Huffer and then yeah. you lose damage and tempo. And you look at Snipe, it took out an abusive sergeant that right. had already put on its battle cry. So it, it yeah. effectively didn't do anything for stopping damage like that turn. It may have prevented two damage yeah. for the following turn, but that's really not effective. Right. Um, if you, if you, you know what it would have been better in that scenario? Maybe eye for an eye because the Huffer would have done four damage and done right by that. Yeah. <laughs> That would have been better. Well, actually, Explosive Trap would have been amazing in that scenario. But Explosive Trap would have been godly. Yeah, it would have been good. Because those, those snakes also did a lot of damage for Chalky. They stuck around for so long mm -hmm. and uh, forced some really awkward trades, too. Yeah. So Chalky's up 2-1, and this is the position where Bunny Muffins was really afraid of. How does he utilize his remaining decks to take out this aggro rogue? Which could be the limiting factor. I mean, what if this aggro rogue just falls flat on its face and doesn't win any games, and Chalky just loses here? That's also a realistic possibility. Yeah. That's the danger of bringing a, quote, unrefined deck, end quote, <laughs> to a Conquest format like this because Conquest punishes decks that are unrefined so much. Yeah. Because you have to win with them. And last year was standing. If you don't have a good deck, it loses. It's out. Whatever. I tried. But in Conquest, if you lose, you have to win with it. You're only as strong as your weakest deck. Yeah. Uh... I'm not sure if this deck is completely unrefined because. Well, I'm not saying it. it's completely unrefined. I, I'm, I've seen this deck more times in the last two days than I've seen anything similar in the last three months, uh, which it probably tells you something. There's some player, some practice group somewhere that have been experimenting and trying to refine this deck over the past couple of days. Um, I actually played against Ixar on ladder the other day. Um, Ixar, the uh, balance designer for yeah, yeah, the Blizzard. Yeah. Um, he was playing this exact deck, nearly. At least all the cards that I've seen, he was playing in the deck. And it's good stuff. Beat him with Dragon Rogue. You beat him with Dragon Rogue. <laughs> yeah, he had a... I, I'd imagine he what had a really your, bad what, hand. What, what dragons were in there? Malagos. Um, Alexstrasza. Wow. And you were playing Sinister and Strikes? And two Astrodrakes. Sinister Strikes, yep. Was playing so you Sinister had four Strikes. dragons? Four dragons. Uh, Black that is, that is casual level of dragons. Yeah. No, oh, I had Chromagus as well, but okay. I never drew it in That's that matchup. Yeah. Oh, Chromagus, you get my approval. Yeah. And double shiv, that type of thing. Yeah, well, you just play backstab you... for seven damage. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Killing Dr. Boom. That's the balance, you know? You, you <laughs> Emperor Thorson so that when they play Dr. Boom on seven, you Mali goes for eight and backstab it. Yeah. It's ridiculous. <laughs> Double Loot Hoarder. This is problematic because uh, Druid doesn't have easy ways. And the Loot Hoarder is sneaking in damage. I used to really underestimate Loot Hoarder a lot back when people were first replacing Novice Engineer with it. Mm -hmm. His Novice got nerfed from a 1-2 to a 1-1. Which I'd like to see reversed just for, you know, 
the heck of it. Yeah, uh, back then it was powerful because there weren't as many strong I opening think plays. Be, I think mid-range would actually become really good again. To the point where people might start complaining about some stuff. Well, that, it was literally put in every deck. The novice engineer. Yeah, that was the reason why they nerfed it. Yeah. He went for a Harrison Jones over the Dr. Boom, but uh, not to worry because he has Innervate to clear the board. That's still a lot of damage in hand. He's got Tinker Sharp, Sword Island, and Blade Flurry with Eviscerate. It's yep. at least 12 damage over the course of two turns. Yep. He's got Cold Light Oracle to draw onto maybe some of his chargers like Wolf Rider. Sap's actually pretty good because it can allow him to push through uh, later on in the game. But this is slightly awkward. Well, I remember that the old Aggro Rogue didn't have Backstab, right? Did it? It went for like really aggressive cards. Like stuff. the Backspace Rogue? Yeah, did it have Backstab? Mm, I actually don't think so. Um, backstab might be into combo like Tinker Sharps a little. Like to help combo. I can't remember if the, the list did have it. Hmm. He actually might just pass. Well, backstabbing this doesn't actually accomplish anything unless he wants to eviscerate it. So Ouch. he does end up eviscerating just because he doesn't want to take that kind of pressure. Yep. To be fair, Harrison, five damage a turn is no, no joke. He would have been able to clear it the turn after with like backstab SI agent, but uh, that is a lot of damage. And this is not what Chucky wants to see. Uh, he has an empty board. He just had to use backstab and an eviscerate to clear Harrison Jones. Yeah. But now he sets up another weapon, and he's got Deadly Poison, Sharp Sword Oil. So next turn, if his opponent plays Dr. Boom. Oh, he can Wrath, though. Wrath and Boom is so big, because now the Sharp Sword Oil doesn't get the three extra damage. Instead, it becomes a six damage weapon. Yep. I, I think that's the difference between winning and losing here, being able to wrath that. Yeah, he's reduced the piece of the combo as well, so combo can come a turn earlier. If he draws a Force of Nature next turn, then the game might just be over. Unless well, he feels like he needs to sap this Dr. Boom, which I think he might. Probably will, and then sap it. And double Coal Light Oracle. Right. But that's also getting Bunny Muffins closer to potential, lead, potential like double combo status. Hmm. Yeah, or just like, you know, Savage Roar with Drew the Claw. Oh, it should be fine. You have 22 health. If you sap and your opponent has Force of Nature, Savage Roar for less than 9 mana, how much damage is that? It's 20, right? He still should be okay. Hypothetically speaking. I yeah. And that's it's a possibility that he could trade in his bombs and get both on 4 damage. So it's maximum 22. <laughs> So if you play Sap and he go ahead and plays that one more time, what's your plan then? A big blade flurry will just encourage like eight damage to your own face. Yeah. And you're gonna be struggling with combo. He needs a charger, like he needs like the cold light to draw into things like um what's it called? The uh South Sea Deckhand, that's what it's called. Mm -hmm. Because the South Sea Deckhand would have allowed him to enable the Sharp Sword Oil and Deadly Poison. But he ends up going for a Sap instead. He's about to also get some bad news that Scenarius is here. And he's going to force a Blade Flurry out of him. I don't think he's going to be too upset about that because he might have been... I don't know, not with Deadly Poison in hand. I was going to say he might have been planning a Blade Flurry regardless. What? But I think he just wanted to use that Tinker Sharp Sword Oil's 8 damage and then be able to use the Deadly Poison later for Blade Flurry. Sure. He's going to try to, I think what he wants to also do is use Shadow Step as a potential just charge for the win. Yeah. <laughs> Dr. Boom has just leveled up. <laughs> That's scary. No Charger. Oh. Cold Light Oracle, Blade Flurry. I mean, a lot has to go right for Chalky not to just die uh, in his mind. But he, one thing is for sure, he has to Blade Flurry those. There's just too many targets for Savage Roar. Yeah. See, if he draws into Arcane Golem with the Cold Light Oracle, he can Arcane Golem, Cold Blood for eight. 
Shadow Step for four more 12, 16 maximum damage if he draws into Arcane Golf. Hmm. Yeah, still be three off. Don't think the deck runs prep. But if he... Nope, still wouldn't be. Oh, four bombs. Four, four, three, three. Oh, my <laughs> God. <laughs> That's 14 damage and bombs. Oh, my. Oh, sweet lord. Wow. Uh, if he doesn't draw Eviscerate, I think he just dies. And there is the South Sea dead can. That's good. Well, Ouch. twas fun game, I suppose, for one person. Oh, man. That was a lot of Boombot damage. That was amusing. Yeah, bust out the trumpets indeed. Bunny Muffins ties it up, and the Druid escapes the claws of the rogue. And once again, we brought to the question are, can we see this rogue deck win a game? Oh, uh -huh. well. Should Shocky just have played Max Shaman? Potentially. I don't know if this Hunter is going to be able to deal with the rogue, though. The Hunter seems like it was definitely yeah, targeted more so. towards um, slower decks. Um, Being maybe a patient, patient warrior, warrior, the handlock. Yeah. Um, but and, you know, maybe the Hunter as well. Against like, super fast decks, yeah. I'm not sure how effective it'll be. That's a good question. Um, not too sure myself. We're going to see. It's been a very good win rate for Hunters uh, when they're not playing other Hunters so far in their redemption tournament. Bunny Muffins at least has sent it to the game number five. I think this is the best position he's ever had in the series so far. Yeah, yeah. This is, I mean, he has more, the same amount of wins in this series. As he has in his entire broadcast career. Yeah. and he, He's doubled up. He's And he's doubled his wins for the Legendary Series already just in this best of five alone. He was the first player eliminated in the regular season week that he played in. And um, it was pretty rough. He lost a 2 wet 1-3 and then lost a Domdus 0-3 in that first week. Yeah. Or in, in week number four, but that was his Legendary Series week. So he's had a rough time. Maybe one best of five victory is all he needs to just unlock all of the potential. To lava shock him? Yeah, it's just trapped inside those large framed glasses all of the potential maybe he just needs to take them off and it'll all come out those are some pretty big glasses for sure yeah Watch your we can give no Let's i was gonna say we can give him the benefit of the doubt and just say that he might just have their normal size glasses and he has a really small head but no, it's, I mean, those are pretty big glasses he could watch two imax films at the same time <laughs> using those glasses you save money. I mean, I know I have pretty big glasses as well. Yeah. I I, I'm actually getting new glasses soon, DJ. I won't My have vision has, uh, you know, been gotten a lot worse, so I need to get an update. So I will get a new pair. Are you going to sell your glasses right now on eBay? Uh, no. Okay. I will not. Jockey keeps deadly poison. It's a really versatile card. Sometimes when you're playing really aggressive, though, you just need those early minions. So Deadly Poison, while absolutely awesome, it's like still a turn three play. Yeah. And he would love to get one of those turn one plays. Doesn't get it. No coin. <laughs> Double web spinner and Haunted Creeper. That is some great anti-aggro tools. We haven't seen uh, like Argent Squire in this deck. Uh, the cheap drop that we saw was South Sea Deckhand. There's not really a reliable drop to like get you going to start off the game. So I'm not sure if Chucky just hasn't drawn into any of those or if he just doesn't run them. But it seems weird to just have your your creature just so your creature level just so clogged up with three drops. He runs SI agent, Colette Oracles, Wolf Riders, Arcane Golem. It seems like all of his creatures are at that three mana, which seems like he'd get off to really rough starts a lot of the time. Double Blade Flurry. Mm. A pretty bad draw. I mean, mm. I think his hand's bad enough to where he can just Cold Light Oracle. Yeah, so that's definitely a possibility. 
just to see how things would go out. But the problem with Hunter is that you're giving him more cards to curve out, and curving out as a Hunter is like the most important thing as a, as a mid range. If you just play like hero power and pass, you set up for a deadly poison SI. If you play Wolf Rider, it just dies to the Hunter Creeper. So it seems like this is the least bad option. And that Stranglethorn Tiger did come from Web Spinner. Yeah. So even though we talked yesterday about the the possibilities of Stranglethorn Tiger in Midrange Hunter, which used to be an include back in the day. I mean, it's really powerful if you need to get that uh, latent damage in, you know? The fact is, it stays hidden for a while, and then all of a sudden it pops out. It's guaranteed damage. Right. People always talk about, like, the effect of Lotheb, the effect of Sylvanas, the effect of Shield Maiden. They just forget that the 5-5s five hit like a truck. Yeah. And sometimes those cards are removed on the first turn they're played. Mm -hmm. Dragonthorn Tiger, I mean, it's guaranteed damage, and even after the guaranteed damage, you have to still get through the body as well. Wow. So, Chalk even playing around the possibility of Hound Master. He's going for every single type of play around as possible, but instead... So SI will be taken down, so that way uh, he can set up the way for the Stranglethorn Tiger. Looking kind of grim. Oh, uh, well, he's got Blade Flurry now with Wolf Rider. That's kind of okay, actually, considering that you would force your opponent to trade into it. But he, and you might get Wolf Rider to attack twice. Uh, he's taking a lot of damage, though. And this is sort of what mid-range hunter loves. They love to, as long as, especially against aggro decks, if they've controlled the state of the board mm -hmm. and have the initiative going into turn five, turn six, turn seven, as long as they have plays for those turns, I mean, those are the power turns for mid-range hunter. Because that's like Sludge Belcher, Lothab, Stranglethorn Tiger, right. then Savannah Hyman. But if he plays Lothab, that means Wolfire double dips in damage. If he plays Sludge Belcher, that's what really gets complicated because then Cold Light has to dig out a sap. But if you dig out the sap, you get more damage in again. You could also just go completely ham and foot wolf rider cold blood for the guaranteed damage. He cold lights instead. More damage coming to the hand. Shadow steps, another four damage. So he's got, or sorry, not four damage, uh, uh, three because the wolf rider is yeah. three damage. Oh, wait. Uh, am I in? Yeah, okay, sorry. So he's got 3 damage, 6, 10, 14 from the Cold Blood. He's 8 damage off. He's still got a lot of draws for damage in his hand. Arcane Golem! That's 18. Nope, that's 19. Arcane Golem plus Shadow Step and Cold Blood is 12. 16, 19 damage. 20 with the hero power. He doesn't have to worry about it. He can actually attach Cold Blood onto this and just uh, hero power down. Yeah, because with Shadow Step, either way, that Cold Blood's not going to ever right. attack twice. So getting the 7 this damage in. This is so in. crazy. Wow! And now he's uh, 1 damage off lethal next turn? Yeah. Uh, or 4. Yeah, he's going to be 1 damage off. I mean, he's assuming this is dead. This Wolf Rider's dead. It'd be an absolute miracle on ice. To my side. If it survives. Mm -hmm. Unleash the Hound to kill off the... Wolf Rider. Uh, Chalky's also on a clock, though. Uh, I mean, he's taking nine damage this turn. He's yeah, that out hover of was a really big on deal, it. too. Is that it? <laughs> yeah, that actually, is. That's exact lethal. Wow. Oh, no, that's a little bit over. Yeah, one damage Oh, over, man, Bunny Muffins is tilted. Oh, he came so close to redeeming himself. Oh, he's going to lose. No. Oh, man. That is that a is BM? Brutal. Oh, no. No, that's not a BM. He, he didn't that. attack with the, the Arcane Golem. No, he did. Oh, he, did he? He, he was going to be one damage over there. Now, that's BM. Okay, okay. Yeah. Overkill him by one. Have you no manners, Chucky? <laughs> wow, what a scary moment for the Dignitas player. He thought that uh, maybe that was the end of his run, but he squeaks out past Bunny Muffins. Mm hmm who, uh, you know what, he had a lot of interesting choices throughout that game, too, even though it was like, oh, yeah, you know, he had to defend against the aggro, but he chose yep. to go for the Tiger over the Sludge Belcher uh, to get more damage. He decided to race. Yeah. Um, he was one turn away, effectively, right. from killing 
from killing that Chucky. Kind of stuff. And if he so. did, maybe he had an opportunity to play Lotheb, deny the spells, because you know that that deck revolves around spells, mm -hmm. the oils, the deadly poisons, the flurries, the the saps. So it's one of those things where there's a lot of interesting decisions that could have actually been made that treat out into different uh, results here. And I'm, I'm, I kind of wish I could go back and see what happened. But the bottom line is uh, Buddy Muffins decided to invite his opponent into the race, but that rogue deck has just so much quick damage burst. And that was a turn 7 kill, just like the old days. They called it turn 7 rogue in, uh, in Asia because yep. of how fast it was. Because the, the, where the deck originated was from Asia. Mm -hmm. Well, it was uh, Chucky. Will, he will be playing uh, GCT Turth, who got that buy for the first round later on. But of course, the next matchup is going to be between Modern Leper and Lead Paint. Modern Leper, we saw in week four. Lead Paint actually was one of the players who qualified twice. So That's right. He'll, he'll be seated today and tomorrow. Today and tomorrow. Um, if, but I'm sure he wants to get it out of the way and, and try and win today. If he wins today, then he he'll, he'll just won't be participating. Oh, my apologies. He plays today and Sunday. Oh, really? Yeah. Tomorrow is uh, uh, okay. The Silent Storm group. All right, well, that should be a really exciting matchup. Of course, we have that matchup, plus many more here in the Redemption Tournament of the Hearthstone Legendary Series. Don't go anywhere.